trout season is coming up and it's one of my favorite times to go out there and have non-stop fishing action. Whether you're a catch and release person or you want to bring home a full stringer, this video is for you because I'll be providing you guys five awesome tips to allow you guys to catch more stock trout. Before we get started, stock trout is usually managed by your state. With that said, make sure you guys check out your state's fish and wildlife website to get all the information such as fish regulations, stock location, and what type of species are being stocked in your waterways. Some of the tips that I'll be providing you today will require you to know these information. So make sure you guys go out there and read these information. It's gonna be really super useful for you guys in the long run. If you guys enjoy this type of videos, don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I'll be doing a lot of trout fishing this season. I promise you guys that. And some of these videos will include me catching trout using different types of lures, exploring different types of body of water, you name it. Heck, at the end of this video, I'll even throw a bonus for you guys. I'll be sharing you my best number one trout slaying lure. So make sure you guys watch to the end. So without further ado, let's go to first tip. Tip number one, know your trout. It's really important to know the different species that your state will stock in your local waterways because different trout will behave differently. My state stock primarily rainbow trout and there are days where they stock brown trout. Now, trout in general like to stay at the bottom, especially in streams because that's their structure. They camouflage at the bottom by the rocks. Most of the time they put, uh, put themselves in a specific way and they look up towards the current. The current will flow food by them and they'll come up and eat them. Now, the difference between rainbow trout and brown trout is that the brown trout are more aggressive than rainbows. Knowing that these two different species have different behaviors, I know how to prepare the different type of lures for fishing these trout. For instance, back to rainbow trout because they like to stay close to the bottom. I like to fish the lures anywhere low at the water column to about mid height. Now if they're super aggressive, then it doesn't really matter. Now brown trout, as mentioned before, they're super duper aggressive, so you can throw the lures anywhere and throw it pretty fast and even high in the water column. Heck, you can even get a top water strike from a brown trout a lot easier than rainbow trout. Tip number two, know your stock location. Again, primarily your state's gonna be stocking the trout in your waterways, so make sure you guys check the website from your state to see where they're actually putting the fish in. And this is really important, especially in early season with the crazy weather pattern. Sometimes rain can destroy a fishing day. Make it very difficult for you guys to catch fish in high chocolate moving water. Plus, if you ever go to a spot, especially during opening week, opening weekend, sometimes you may not even get a parking spot. So you need to have a backup plan and go to a second place. And now, Knowing your fishing spot is really so important that I actually split this into two tips. So leading to the third tip, guys, don't fish ponds, fish creeks and streams. That's tip number three. Don't fish ponds, go for creeks and streams. And the reason why is streams are their natural habitat. They love moving water. And also guys, streams, usually they're fixed with where they're stocking. So you guys could technically walk the banks and cast even halfway or even all the way across the stream and catch your trout. Now, if they stock it in a pond, you can walk all around a bank. If it's not the right structure, the right contour, the trout may not even be there. And lastly, because in streams, the trout is always swimming upstream because they don't want to be swept away by the current. They're always looking up the stream, waiting for stuff to swim by, float by, you know, bugs, fish, whatever, and they ambush them. And in order to do that, they spend a lot of energy facing the current, so they're always gonna need to replenish their energy. So they're more active there, so you will catch a lot more trout in fish streams and creeks. Tip number four, use ultra light tackle. Not only because trout are delicate species and you should use lighter lures, lighter lines, and lighter tackle, it's actually a lot easier and a lot more fun to catch these trout using light tackle. I like to use ultra light rod that's be able to throw 1 32nd ounce to 1 16th ounce at least. Uh, some people go extreme and even go to 164th ounce, but I think the 132nd ounce will suffice. For fishing reels, you can use a small spinning reel such as a size 500 or a size 1000. That should be perfectly fine. I use anywhere from four to six pound test line. The thinner the better because it allows to go through the water column a lot easier. Now there's different type of materials for fishing lines. For instance, there's mono, there's fluorocarbon, and there are copolymer. Mono floats so it stays in a water column higher and the lure will sink slower. Fluorocarbon will sink faster so it gets to the bottom quicker. And then you have copolymer which is a hybrid of the two. I would typically say it sinks pretty fast as well. The line that I'm using right now is from Casking. They call it fluorocoat copolymer. It's actually super duper thin stuff. I used 
their six pound test line, but that line diameter is like equivalent to Suffolk Siege four pound test line. It's a lot thinner and it, it sinks fast. I can get the lure down to the depth I need. Speaking of which, weight of lures. For sinking lures, I use primarily 132nd ounce and 116th ounce. For spoons and for like jerk baits and stuff, I use things a little heavier because they could ride in a higher water column. So things like 1 8 ounce. But you guys get the general idea and the range of sizes I use. My last and final tip for you guys, and this is really important, do not use dough bait. Yes, dough baits are super duper effective for trout. I get it. They're farm raised, they eat dough, they eat pellets. It's really effective for sure. They catch trout for many, many years, but you catch more trout not using it. And here's the reason why. The proper rig for a dough bait, it consists of a hook, a sinker, and your dough. And the dough basically floats in the water and you basically swing your lure out to where you think the fish are at. And you basically let it sit and wobble around by the current. And you slowly retrieve it in the bottom and hopefully that the dough bait will slide in front of your face where they want it and they'll come and get it. That's a slow fishing method. I prefer to be casting lures because I can actually cover a lot more water looking for those active fish. Because you could be fishing in one pool where you think there's a lot of trout and they're not biting. Well, you're gonna keep sitting there soaking your dough bait and they also come off a lot easier. So you're actually feeding trout dough and eventually they're not gonna be hungry. I don't like using dough bait for that reason. My recommendation, cast lures, retrieve them, cover a lot of water. If they're not there, move on. This is what they call power fishing in the bass fishing world. You cover a lot of water quickly as possible where you think the fish are most likely gonna be in. So there you guys have it. Those are my five important tips that will catch you guys a lot more trout this season. And like I said, I'm gonna give you guys a bonus tip, which is my very, very favorite lure to use to catch stock trout. And that's the Marabou Feather Hair Jig. And now this originally came from the fly fishing world because they used a lot of feathers and stuff, but eventually it went into the conventional world where people just tie uh, feathers onto jig heads. And I've been doing this for, I will say almost two decades now, catching trout and crappies and everything using Marabou jigs. I usually carry just two weights, 132nd ounce and 116th ounce. And the colors I carry are usually on a darker natural side. And that is because a lot of time you fish in creeks, right? You have trees all over the place. Early in the morning, the sun, although it rises, it's gonna be behind those trees. So everything is technically still kind of dark and dim. So having those natural colors, like olive green, blacks, browns, it's gonna be perfect for those fish. And not only that, a lot of stuff early in season, like the bugs that hatches everything, they're, they're more of those brown, greenish color. And lastly, stock trout eat pellets, right? In the farms, what color are those pellets? They're brownish green, right? Other colors I'll carry, especially on those bright sunny days, will be chartreuse and pink. I'm telling you guys, you must use the Marabou jig. I thank you for watching this video. If you guys have any questions or tips, uh, just leave me a comment below. I'll definitely get back to you guys. Don't forget, the fish don't wait. Start preparing your fishing stuff, and I wish you guys luck catching a lot of trout this season. Tight lines.